What's up everyone, Anel here. Today I'm going to bring you the first of three major combat guides that I've got planned over the next few days. I wasn't exactly sure how to split these up and whether I should split it by blades or not, but ultimately decided it would likely be better to focus on each team as a whole since swapping between all three team members is both fun and useful. There's typically going to be one major style that you want to focus on, but both blades can be valuable to the team for every party member. The first person I wanted to discuss is Adam and his blades Mithra and Minoth. There isn't a ton to say about Adam himself, he uses the affinity chart of what other blade you currently have active, and the only thing he differs in is element and weapon stats. So the driver weapon stats are based on the weapon stats of both blades. So if both are at S+, then Adam's attack was going to be higher than if just one of them is. His other stats are also pretty static, only critical rate changes depending on which tier of greatsword that you have equipped. He can also get up to 40% critical rate total with Mithra active because of her glint skill and her affinity chart. As far as accessories, you have quite a few options. You can't get the Abyss Mask, which is the highest additive item until the final main enemy, so don't worry about that one too much, but headbands that increase critical damage are very strong for this team as a whole, and cancel damage from eye patches are also pretty strong. As far as damage increases, these are probably going to be your best bets, but you can run with any other additive sources like Box or Van Braces if you're a lower level than enemies. Another option that I like and think can be very valuable to use is the Omega Drive. This is stronger if you plan on using Mithra more, just because she has a higher critical rate and strong multi-hit arts. And since you stack orbs really easy in this game and may want to chain attack as soon as possible against some of these stronger Golden Beasts, this can be a very nice option to have. Metals are still pretty useful for critical healing if you need them, but with Red, hate, but with red Health and Haze, it isn't too essential to worry about in this game. As far as pouch items, I like to run this strong book called The Aegis. And I like running this amazing pouch item called Miracle Parfait as well, which Mithra crafts. This gives a great mix of art recharge and special damage. So let's talk about Mithra and Minoth now. So for both of them, I like running the Moon Matter Courtship. This gives them over 2,000 auto attack each, and that's pretty nice to have. If you don't have one of these chips, typically you're going to run or want to use a chip with higher attack and critical rate, and those are going to be the best options. So for Mithra herself... Her affinity chart hasn't really changed too much. She has the exact same battle skills. Foresight is still a great support ability for the party and really helps out with the agility Hugo setups and ensures that you're not going to miss too many attacks as a whole. Lightspeed Flurry has been nerfed slightly, but this isn't really a major deal at all since art recharge items do exist and Photon Edge and Lightning Buster are very powerful multi-hit arts that easily get the full recharge. So Glint gives her and Adam a flat 15% critical rate, which is nice to always give her a respectable crit no matter what courtship she is using. Her specials are actually pretty decent too. Twilight Striker here hits a lot and is very spammable with at least light speed for early level 4, since it's always going to be at the recharge back to level 1. Chroma Dust is kinda weak though, only hits once and it's only really good if you're under 30% HP. But Terminal Flash is very good. It increases critical damage which is very valuable as an independent multiplier and Mithra has a lot of critical hit rate. So for Minoth, he focuses more on his added sources of damage for his strength. For every single cancel you do, talent arts, swapping, art cancels, he's going to get a di an additional 10% damage stacking up to 250%. And this does not reset even if you swap to Mithra. So this is very valuable to have. The only limitation on it is that you cannot stack it while Mithra is actually active. But for as long as he is, it will stack. His second ability, Medeo, is kind of useless. Aggro reduction is typically ineffective, and since Hugo has a Force Taunt anyway, he can actually do an okay job of keeping aggro no matter what um, Minoth is doing here. His final ability is just a very nice 100% additive damage multiplier that you're likely going to have in all the important fights in the game, since unique monsters, golden beasts, and bosses are the important fights, and the ones that actually last a decent amount of time. His specials are nothing really that great. They, they hit a lot, but they don't really have very good effects for the type of game this is, but they're still really useful for the damage boost they provide, and they look really cool. So as far as aux, aux cores on both of them, I just used the best damage boosting aux cores. Um, Affinity Max and Outdoor Attack for Mithra, and Affinity Max, Outdoor Attack, and Beast Hunter in this case for Minoth. More damage is always good, and for these blades it's probably going to be better than whatever options you, uh, whatever other options you might have. The last thing I want to quickly mention before a demonstration of this team is Talent Arts. Adam has a really strong Talent Art which is called Transcend which allows him to extend driver combos at the cost of his health. This can be very strong with critical healing strategy if you want to use that, and you can basically permanently extend, extend a topple if your teammates don't ruin it, and it can, this can be very useful for fusion combos and chain attacks. Mithra's Talon Art basically gives the party full evasion for like 15 attacks, 
And this is useful to have, but it can only be used if she dies. So it's not actually that great to worry about, and I'm not going to worry about showing it off. But if you get revived after dying, you can use this with Mithra for like a certain amount of time afterwards, and your team will pretty much be invincible for the next 20 seconds or so. So Minoth's Talent Art doubles all the damage of the next art he does, and this is actually a really nice Talent Art, because you can cancel into it, and you can use it and just cancel into arts and then cancel back into this infinitely. You can use an art, use this, use an art, use this, and you'll be able to stack up that cancel passive really fast. And you also do a bunch of extra damage, and it's just probably one of the greatest talents arts in the game. The only negative is that you gain some extra aggro, but that's not really a big deal, because like I said, Hugo has some force taunt, and that's a really nice to have in this game. So after all that, let's get into the demonstration. I'll try to show off all the specials as well as what each blade can do here. So first up, we've got Mithra, who hasn't really changed too much. She's still all about critical recharging, helping the party evade attacks with Foresight. Her critical recharge allows her to use specials faster, and her level 3 is really powerful, and you probably want to be spamming that one as much as possible. You can still infinite cancel some of her arts, like Photon Edge and Lightning Buster, thanks to the recharge and the fact that they're multi-hits. And overall, she hasn't changed too much. Adam himself has a bunch of single-hit arts that are all decently powerful and can also take advantage of Mithra's recharge. If Laura manages to get a break, you can also switch back into him for a topple and then launch, and then back to Mithra for a smash after you extend the launch. So as you can see here, I'm just using Lightning Buster, and you can infinite cancel it into itself still. Nothing has really changed at all, you just have to run some art recharge, and, and since you're always going to be critting probably at least one of the four hits, you don't really have to worry about ever not critting. The arts being such powerful multi-hits is honestly better than Rex's art, just because you can pretty much always get the recharge, and that's probably why it was nerfed to 60%. Overall, though, the strategy with Mithra hasn't really changed too much. You just want to stack some orbs as fast as possible, build up your party meter with her critical hit rate, and use some powerful chain attacks. So as you can see here, I'm able to extend the combo with Adam, and use Mithra's level 3 to get a fusion combo on top of that, and then use a powerful chain attack. Foresight can still be a great ability, to, because if you're struggling against some of these higher powerful enemies like Gibson and, um, and Nisei, you can swap to Hugo, let him take advantage of Foresight with an agility setup, and basically never get hit. So as you saw there on the fusion combo, I'm doing a lot of additional damage on Gibson. And you also saw Mithra's level 1 there. It's really fast, hits a bunch of times, and it's honestly a really useful special just for charging party meter too, just because it hits so much and it always gets the recharge. So here's Chroma Dust. As you can see, not only is it slower than her level 1, but it only hits one time, and it's kind of weak, honestly. Adam's specials, as you've probably also seen, are pretty similar. All three of them are. You just uh, slash your sword a bunch of times. And I'm not quite sure if they use the effect of Mithra's specials or not, but it wouldn't surprise me if they do. So here's Mithra's level 3. It does a lot of additional damage if you land a crit. So if you're running a critical symbol or something, you can do a lot of damage with that in chain attacks and just in general. But that's about enough of Mithra. We're about to get to Minoth after this chain attack ends. And I'll try to talk about Adam just a little bit more. So because his arts aren't quite as good as Mithra's or Minoth's, it's probably going to be only useful to use Adam when you want to extend like a driver combo. Outside of that, it's probably just going to be better to stay on Mithra or Minoth unless you just need his element for something. Mithra has critical recharge on her arts and can infinitely cancel, and Minoth has that really good talent art that can cancel into his other arts, and you can infinitely do that as well. Speaking of Minoth, let's talk about him now. So like I already said, Minoth gets bonus damage the more you cancel, so you probably want to start off with Adam here and cancel quickly to three times, and then you can swap into Minoth after using maybe a quick special or something. And then once you swap into Minoth, you're probably not going to swap off of him. So like I said with Minoth, you can cancel his arts into his talent art and back into another art, and you can do this for all three of his arts depending on what you need. And each use of this is going to stack and increase your damage even further. And with this, you can reach some pretty ridiculous damage with Minoth, and he can be a really fun and interesting character because of this. All of his arts hit a lot, and you don't have to worry about them ever being blocked since he's a gun. And he also gets a very useful evasion art that you can use to block some dangerous attacks like tank marts from Gibson. And he has some pretty good specials. One thing I didn't mention, you probably just noticed Mithra came out there. When you use a level 3 special, the driver uses their level 2 special, and the third blade uses their level 1 special. So level 3 specials are actually more useful than level 4 specials in this game because of reasons like that. So as you can see by watching this, it's pretty easy to infinitely cancel Minoth's arts here and do a lot of damage with them with the duo. And you'll get a lot of additional damage with them. I just try to set up one fusion combo here on top of break, and then I think I chain attack. And now we're going to take a closer look at Minoth's specials. They're all multi-hits. I think this first one hits like 16 times or something. It wouldn't surprise me. So he slashes them a bunch of times, then shoots them. So overall, for extended fights that you're not going to be ending for a while, I'd say Minoth is a little bit better than Mithra. But if you want to like quickly chain attack, get some orbs really quickly, and end fights faster, I'd say Mithra's a little bit better. And of course, if you desperately need foresight for the evasion against really strong enemies that are just destroying you, then Mithra's obviously better for that as well. 
But overall, both of these blades are really good. They have really good specials, really good effects on their kits. And honestly, they pretty much every blade in this game is really good. Team Adam has a lot of reasons you would want to control them, though. Being able to extend driver combos can be very useful in this game, and having the best way to build party meter can also be very useful. Overall, though, you can't really go wrong with anyone, because everyone in this game is really good, like I already said. That was Minos level 3. It looks really cool. I believe it has guard and null, so you never have to worry about him blocking any of those attacks there. And as you can see, once you stack up Minos passive, he does a lot of damage. He's really fun to use, as is Mithra. And overall, Team Adam is a great team to use, and one of the most fun that I've had playing in this game. Being able to cancel his arts into his talent arts back into his arts is really fun, and you do a lot of additional damage with that, which is really cool. Besides that, I don't really have a ton else to say. I hope this little quick guide was enjoyable to you and you learned something from it. I don't really have many more videos for Torna since there isn't a ton of content to show off, but I hope you'll enjoy those in the future as well. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see my future Xenoblade content. I've got a few more guides planned and interesting things planned for this game as well as the base game, so please look forward to that. I hope you're all enjoying Torna or have enjoyed Torna as much as I have despite it being pretty short. I know there isn't a ton of post-game content to really use great builds on, but maybe this can still be useful for later game players looking to tackle Golden Beast, or who just want to have more fun playing the really cool combat in this game. Outside of that, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.